So you guys want to know how Hans Zimmer creates hype and tension in his music? Well, let's use Pirates of the Caribbean as an example. I'm talking specifically about this string passage right here. Having stuff like this allows you to create lots of tension and make effective transitions that make the track flow a lot more easily. Something that beginners neglect to do and that's why their music sounds like beginners. If you start implying stuff like this in your music, it becomes way more professional. But how the hell do you do that? Well, the title of this video says Hans Zimmer, but this is something that many composers do. Hans is just great at taking ideas from many different genres of composers and implying that in his music to make it sound amazing. In this case, this can be explained if we go and check out a dubstep remix of Kingdom Hearts that I wrote. I know that's not what you came here for, but we're gonna go back and forth between this remix and the Hans Zimmer track to make you understand this concept in a way that's easy to understand. Say, for example, you have this build up right here. When you feel this, you expect something's about to come. What is the reason why you feel that you expect something? What is the thing that entices the listener to prepare for the drum? Well, one of the things is this. This type of sound is called a riser, a sound that has a very specific tone that keeps on rising chromatically. When I say chromatic, I mean it's doing all the possible notes in the 12 tone scale, which is exactly what is happening in the strings here. This is essentially an orchestral riser. They are sometimes going out of the key that the track is in, and that is completely fine as long as you try to use this as a device to increase tension. That is used a lot in horror music too. Writing with chromatic scale, just ignoring for a second the, the concept of writing in a key really helps because what you do is you create this sense of tension and easiness. It's like a car going you're like, oh shit, it's going faster and faster. No, that is not enough. That needs to be backed by something that makes the listener feel like I'm in a safe place. Now, before we talk about what holds you in check during this crazy transition, I want to talk about how the strings were written. I'm using Metropolis Arc 1. Hans Zimmer did a thing on double basses and cellos where they essentially played the scale in which the track is in. They're not playing chromatically. They're going up and down the scale like this. You know, from up to down, and then they go up and up and all the way until C5 almost and when you hit around this note here that's where the double basses and cellos start to sound out of their natural register and also the strings on double basses when we cannot reach so high so instead of going higher and higher Hans Zimmer reverted to going back down again which is very cool, but this is not chromatic. So he gave a sense of foundation, but doing the normal scale with the lowest strings. But when it comes to the higher ones, like violas and violins and shit, it just went fucking crazy. This is a pattern. One down, two up. One down, two up. One down, two up. And it goes that way throughout this passage. At a certain point, it repeats again. Now, once again, here with this G6, we reach such a high note that, you know, keeping on going higher would probably be too mental. And also, after a certain amount of rising, what you want is to create this sense that the tension is about to break by making it peak. One way to make tension peak is to add repetition. That is what Hans Zimmer did here. You know, like that, it really makes it like stay on the edge. Now, wherever there's repetition in your music, you also want something else that kind of guides the track forwards too. So when the violas and violins go crazy like that, you're gonna notice that's exactly where the bass starts to go down. That is a very good collaboration in the string department. But that's just the string department. You have the brass doing something very similar, actually. You notice the trumpets are doing ba 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 with triplets. So this now the brass is kind of doing the same thing, but it's giving a sense of novelty because it adds different sort of rhythms, which is pretty cool. But what's most important is the percussion, which does something like this.
Now, I made a five-minute tutorial on this percussive passage alone. It's called like how to write percussion like Hans Zimmer or something like that. Go find it if you want to learn how I made this for libraries I use, etc. But the way this percussion help the track is that they give you something to hold on to. The rhythm stays quite steady for a bit. It's interesting, but it's steady. It doesn't change. It's not chromatic, crazy, uh, infuriating. But at the end of the passage, that's where it goes a bit crazy. <laughs> You know, you want that. Like, the same thing happens in electronic music. Like, if we go back to this build-up. The one thing you notice, maybe, is that the drums are going kind of crazy. You know? That kind of creates an anticipation, and as the transition is reaching to its end, that's where you get those, those feels like taka, 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 taka. In symphonic orchestral music, you can definitely play with making your drums way more powerful, way more layered, adding some you know taiko rolls and stuff like that that I explained in the drums tutorial. So when you put all of that together, you get a bass line that guides you, drums that make you feel safe and also give a sense of power, and the strings that are just like these hysterical kids that scream the highest possible until they reach the peak and they can't anymore, but they keep on screaming, while the bass line guides the transition to its end. Let's listen to it once again. So that's one way in which Hans Zimmer creates tension in Pirates of the Caribbean. There's like 7,000 more because music is not only about learning one trick. Sorry to let you down. Writing professional music is about learning thousands of new tricks and learning to imply them all in your musical creations. That's where it starts to sound very professional. Which is why one tutorial will not save you. A hundred tutorials might teach you a lot. A course might teach you even much more. By the way, speaking of courses, Evident is back. Lots of you have been asking me about when they will open their courses again. They're open now. You can get them all, I think. And there's many new courses that just came out, like Cinematic Music 2. So I would recommend you to check out the courses link down below in the description of this video. Or if you are broke and you don't want to spend money on those, watch this tutorial channel. There's way more information here than you even need to make orchestral music at a professional level. So both resources are valid. You can do it. You just have to get working, write a little music. You can get there. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.